Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Baltimore. Welcome to our new show, Reality Asserts Itself. The writer Chris Hedges talking about the Reverend Daniel Berrigan life he says we should emulate, wrote this. Berrigan is one of the nation's most courageous voices for justice. And then quoting Berrigan, Hedges writes, Faith always starts with oneself. It means an overriding sense of responsibility for the universe, making sure that the universe is left in good hands, and the belief that things will finally turn out right if we remain faithful. Now joining us in Baltimore is Chris Hedges. Thanks for joining us again. Sure. So watch part one and part two. You'll see the introduction down below is the full introduction of Chris. But by now, everybody knows Chris is a great writer. He wrote for the New York Times for 15 years, and now he writes for Truth Dig. So, if we remain faithful, it will turn out all right. Do you still have that faith? Do you still believe that? In an existential sense, yes. In a practical sense, perhaps not. Um, we are emulating, as anthropologists like Taint or Redman or others have chronicled and collapse of past civilizations, all of the mistakes that um, complex societies have made uh, over the centuries, uh, 5,000 years of human civilization. And um, uh, the difference is that this time when our civilization goes down, the whole planet's gonna go down with us. Uh, the folly of allowing the fossil fuel industry to determine our relationship to the ecosystem uh, the folly of embracing an ideology of limitless expansion and consumption. Uh, you know, at this point, it's quite clear what the consequences of that will be, and yet we cannot wrest ourselves from uh, these systems or from uh, the uh, benefits that those of us in the wealthy industrialized world derive from these systems. Um, uh, and I think that Berrigan uh, certainly sees all of that. Uh, and yet uh, he makes that leap, which I also make, from the practical to the moral. Uh, and as Father Berrigan says, we're called to do the good, or at least the good insofar as we can determine it, and then we have to let it go. That the Buddhists call it karma, that for us it's the belief that the good draws to it the good that rebellion and resistance itself is a moral imperative. And even though uh, empirically uh, everything around us may uh, appear to deteriorate, it doesn't invalidate that act of resistance. Um, but you know, in terms of, you know, I read the climate science reports, uh, including one not long ago by the World Bank, which is pretty uh, apocalyptic. Uh, I have, uh, I think, uh, you know, especially looking at how past societies and past civilizations have crumbled. I was I studied classics at Harvard. Um, uh, you know, you can look at the fall of the Roman Empire, or the Mesopotamian Empire, or the uh, Mayan Empire. Um, at the end, uh, your elites retreat into uh, self-protected enclaves, forbidden cities, Versailles, as just as our elite has utterly unplugged itself from day-to-day -day reality. I think a New Yorker writer called it Richistan. They don't fly commercial airlines. They, there's one set of laws and regulations for the 99% and a whole another set of laws and regulations with their lobbyist right uh, for themselves. Um, they live in a kind of parallel universe. They don't understand, and yet they are the ones who are uh, relentlessly uh, exploiting uh, both human capital and finally the environment uh, for short-term profit. I mean, 40% of the summer Arctic sea ice melts and Shell Oil looks at it as a business opportunity. We're talking about the death throes of the planet uh, and they're dropping one half billion dollar drill bit after another. Uh, there's a scramble for the last vestiges of fish stocks, uh, oil, gas, minerals, it's, ins it's utter insanity. I wrote a column last week that said, you know, it, Melville's the most prescient um, sort of oracle in, a, in American culture because we're all on the Pequot. We're all headed off on this insane quest, uh, which, uh, which I think in rational moments we even understand will kill us, and yet we can't free ourselves from it. Here's what Chris wrote. 
And so we plunge forward in our doomed quest to master the forces that will finally smite us. Those who see where we are going lack the fortitude to rebel. Mutiny was the only salvation for the Pequod's crew. It's our only salvation, but moral cowardice turns us into hostages. Moby Dick rams and sinks the Pequod. The waves swallow up Ahab and all who follow him, except one. A vortex formed by the ship's descent collapses, and quote, and the great shroud of the sea rolled on as it rolled 5,000 years ago. It's pretty gloomy, the outlook of, some people have critiqued some of your writing, especially more recently, that it's kind of gloomy, that, that people are left feeling like the sea is going to sort of overtake us and there isn't much we could do. Uh, just one more thing, in the same article about Berrigan you wrote, the failure by large numbers of citizens to carry out mass acts of civil disobedience will only ensure that we remain hostages to corporate power. You're disappointed you're not seeing more civil disobedience. You're because the what? formal mechanisms of power don't work. We've undergone what John Ralston Saul calls correctly a coup d'etat, corporate coup d'etat in slow motion, and it's over. They've won. We live in what the political philosopher Sheldon Wolin calls a system of inverted totalitarianism. And by that he means it's not classical totalitarianism, it doesn't find its expression through a demagogue or a charismatic leader, but through the anonymity of the corporate state. That in classical totalitarian regimes you have a reactionary or revolutionary party that replaces one structure with another. In inverted totalitarianism you have corporate forces that purport to uh, to be loyal to the Constitution, electoral politics, the iconography and language of American patriotism, and yet internally have seized all of the levers of power to render the citizen impotent. And, um, and so that this political theater which we are witnessing is a charade. Um, the Democrats are as beholden to corporate power as the Republicans. Uh, the judiciary has become a wholly own subsidiary of the corporate state, uh, and our only hope left is to build mass movements of dissent, and I covered the revolutions in Eastern Europe, uh, that can wrest power back from this rapacious corporate elite that quite literally will kill us. And I, I see, of course it's bleak, um, and you know, I'm sorry, the, 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 the climate science reports are bleak. Uh, I'm not making it up. Uh, and uh, this kind of mania for hope uh, is really uh, a kind of sickness because it prevents us from seeing how dire and catastrophic the situation is if we don't radically reconfigure our relationship to each other and to the ecosystem. Uh, and so, of course, people don't want to hear it. You know, they want to uh, become... Uh, entranced or mesmerized with the trivia that dominates the airwaves and the sagas and soap operas. And, uh, you know, we are fed this mantra that is really fiction. And, and the mantra goes that we can have everything we want, that reality is never an impediment to what we desire. And that's given to us by Oprah and it's given us to us by Hollywood that's and the we're Christian That's why calling right? this show Reality well, Asserts Itself, because you can think that. Right. But. And, and it's just, it's a lie. It's not true. Uh, and, and I think we can't even use the word hope uh, until we confront reality and begin to resist against the real. If we're resisting against uh, a fantasy or fiction, if we believe that Barack Obama is going to save us, um, then, you know, it's like writing letters to Uncle Joe Stalin if he only knew what they were doing here out in, you know, the Ukrainian wheat fields, uh, where, of course, millions of people died for the, for the famine. Then uh, everything we do is futile. So I think uh, it's fundamental that we grasp reality in order to build effective resistance. And unfortunately, reality at this moment in human history is, is uh, pretty bleak. Well, that's, let's pick that up in the, in the next segment. So please join us the next part of this series of interview with Chris Hedges on Reality Asserts Itself on The Real News Network. <laughs>